Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I'm down in Santa Rosa Beach, Florida, and I'm actually attending and helping with one of Richard King's uh, scraping classes that he's holding down here this week. And uh, I thought I'd bring along a couple of my new 12 inch straight edge castings and do a little test run with these at this scraping class. We've actually got a couple of students that are wanting to scrape some of these in. And uh, I thought it'd be a perfect opportunity. So let me give you a quick update on the 12 inch straight edge. I know of having lots of people asking about these. Uh, Clark Easterling, who is over at Windy Hill Foundry, my foundry guy, he has been setting up to run these as a production job. He's real close. We're not quite there yet. I know it's taking a little bit of time, but guys, there's just a lot of things that has to be done to get those patterns just right to really make his job easier where he can crank out a, a lot of these. But what Clark has done is he has sent me a couple of production samples. And these um, are more or less what the end product should look like. And what I wanna do is before we really just kinda of go to the next step is we wanna machine these, scrape them, just make sure everything is right before we start selling them. And uh, that is what I'm gonna be doing today. Now, I literally got these the night before I was leaving to come down to this class. And I did not have time to machine these in my shop before I left. So I'm gonna be doing a little bit of work in John Terry's shop down here in Florida where we're actually having the class. So uh, I'm gonna be using some machinery you probably haven't seen before um, and it'll be the first time I've actually used these machines. And what we're gonna start with is just like I do it at, at home, I start by milling the bottom of this on my horizontal milling machine, on my Kearney Trekker horizontal milling machine. John has a big Cincinnati number four. This, this machine is uh, a size larger than the mill that I have, my K&T, and, uh, and I'm really actually kind of looking forward to using this. It's been a while since I've used a Cincinnati mill. We used to have a Cincinnati mill in the machine shop that I worked in many years ago, and, uh, but pretty much for the last 10 or 12 years, uh, I've pretty much been using K&T when it comes to horizontal milling machines, so I'm kind of excited. Cincinnati makes a great machine, by the way. Uh, I know that for a fact from years of using it, but uh, we're going to be setting up to do this, so let me kind of... Uh, I tell you what, I'm not going to bother showing you the straight edges right now. We're just going to go ahead and get set up and get this job going. So the table on this big mill machine is like an aircraft carrier. I got a lot of room on it. I really like this big machine. I wish I had one this size in my shop. Um, but like I do at home, I'm going to be laying this straight edge where the bottom is pointing to the back of the machine. I have a face mill on here, and we're going to basically cut this square to the straight edge. Now, because of the way this table is, uh, he's got a big groove here for fluid and stuff for coolant to flow in. I just took a piece of steel. I'm just kind of using this as a platform to set this on. It just gives me a little bit better area to, to clamp down to. And I got a couple of clamps here. And we're just gonna clamp this straight down to the table. I'm just gonna butt the back of the straight edge up against the back of the table here. That should get that fairly square. We're dealing with a casting, so there's nothing. This will be the first machine surface on it. So right now there really isn't anything that's uh, you know, square or whatever to work off of. We're establishing that with this first cut. So let's go ahead and get these clamped down. There we go, that should be nice and solid. And uh, we'll get set up and we're just going to machine it over here on this face mill. All right, let's see if I can figure out the controls on this thing. We're going to start by uh, raising the table up. Nope, go the other way. There we go. Using the rapids to pull that table up. And I think that's high enough. I'm going to take this in. I'll start my spindle here. It takes just a second. I'm running at 188 RPMs, which is, I looked up last night for this size cutter, and that's about what it calls for. I'm just going to bring this in kind of slow here until we touch off. Pull 
peel that off. That'll be a good starting point. We're gonna let that feed on in there. And we'll just let it cut across and uh, mill that bottom. I might have to make another pass here. Sounds like I got one cutter making a little bit heavier cut, but. Just let it go ahead and cut across. See what we got. All right, let's see what we got here. That actually machined pretty darn good. Now this little swipe going across here, we got that one tooth that's a little bit higher than the others. And that's just when I was coming back across from the rapid and it was hitting that. So don't kind of disregard that. When we get through the next pass, I won't come back across like this. Uh, but I'm actually pretty happy with that finish, looks good. Now, when you're machining these straight edges, I leave these purposely fairly thick. I wanna take a fair amount of metal off the bottom of this to kind of get up underneath that hard layer on the outside. On the casting, that outside layer is gonna always be harder. We wanna get into that soft cast iron that we can scrape. And the way you can kind of tell where you need to be, on this front, there's a radius, and we made a pretty big radius on there again uh, to keep that cooling down. We didn't want to come to a sharp point. And what you want to do when you're machining this is, is end up about halfway across that radius. So basically kind of at the highest point is where you want to mill it to. And it's going to end up being somewhere between an eighth of an inch and three sixteenths of an inch that you're cutting off the bottom. Uh, and that's, again, we designed it to do that. People, when they're doing these straight edges, a lot of times they just want to barely take some material off and just get below the cast iron. But really, we want to get down a little bit deeper than that for ideal scraping. I'm going to go ahead and make another pass across there. And uh, we'll, uh, I think, be through with the bottom on this. Here we go on pass two. And uh, we're right where we want to be on that depth. Nothing precision here, it's just clean it up. Um, but I think this is going to be just fine. We'll let this pass go and uh, we'll pull that off and let you look at it. There's the finished product on that bottom. Uh, again, I'm, I'm happy with that. I think that's gonna be fine. We're gonna grind it anyway. So this is just rough milling right now, but looks good. I got another one I'm gonna do. I'll do that one off camera and then we'll go to the next step. Just thought I'd show this. We uh, put a different face mill on here and we don't have that high tooth on there like we did the other one. You can hear this sounds a lot, lot better uh, coming across there. Just thought I'd show that real quick on the second one that we're doing. I'm gonna knock this one out and I'll bring you back at the end. So just to show the difference between those two uh, face mills that we use, this is the first one where we had that high tooth and you can kind of see, you know, we got a little bit of a pattern in there. We went to that second uh, face mill that had all the teeth better aligned. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's a cross hatch in here. It's cutting on both sides. That tells me this, this uh, mill is trammed in really, really nice. And uh, that's a really nice cut going across there. Again, we're gonna grind these before we scrape them uh, to get the little bit of a pattern that's in there out. I mean, you could probably scrape these as they are, but we'll save some time by, by grinding them. But anyway, I just thought I'd show that real quick. All right, guys, we're getting ready to mill this back side. I'm just going to square it up, just clean it up. This is not a surface that gets used on a straight edge, but we don't want it to be a rough casting. So again, I just kind of got it laying out over, and we're just going to run in front of that cutter and clean it right up.
so guys, we're gonna come in here and cut the dovetail on this. We're playing around and we're again at the scraping class and Lance Baltsley's here and he has this uh, little Rockford open-sided shaper that we dug out of the storage and yep. powered up. Yep. First time he's ever used it and we said, hey, we're gonna try to cut this dovetail on the planer. So tell us about your machine, Lance. I don't know a damn thing about it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I bought this from, um, what's Ray's last name? Uh, uh, long, yeah. long, 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 long machine, machine tool. tool. Yeah. Very long, and I bought it about two years ago. Uh, actually, Adam, were you doing the tour of his machine shop? Or was I, it I, I saw it first. Yeah. I think he, we both Keith, saw Keith it. He saw it first, and then we went up there to hang out with Andrew. And, and Andrew you, took us down there to Long, and yeah. we went through to see the warehouse, and then I sent you some pictures yeah, of it. Right. Well, I, it I sent you pictures, too, yeah, because I think you talked to him whenever I was there anyway. Yeah. Well, anyway, I called Ray. We made a deal on it. It sat up there for like a year before I got um, uh, Jason McDonald to pick it up on one of his runs to Texas. And then John is so kind to be our warehouse, <laughs> and uh, he stored it here. And then the plan was to tear this thing down um, and actually do some scraping on the ways. Uh, the ways are pretty challenged. They need a lot of work. And so the debate right now is whether we send it out for grinding or scrape it. Um, I'm likely gonna scrape it, we'll see, but hopefully later today we'll, pull, we'll start pulling the table and get the housing cover off of it. And uh, we know the hydraulics are a little... Yeah, it needs some hydraulic work. Hydraulics so. are gonna need a little bit of uh, work in figuring out what's going on with it. Cause we know we've got some issues here now, but uh, what, what we're wanting to do is just kind of play around with it, make mm -hmm. a little cut, and then kind of see what's going on with the machine. And yeah, then ask, you'll, I actually you'll, asked Keith to do some of the work on these uh, straight edges of his on the machine so we can see it in action. So, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to get this thing set up and we're going to cut this dovetail. So let's do it. So we've actually already done one. So I, we've already kind of got our setup worked out here, but we just set this on a block to just kind of pick it up off the bottom since uh, then clamping it straight down. Very similar to how we did it over on the horizontal mill. Uh, but first step here is we're going to just kind of snug this thing down and I'm going to take a indicator and we'll indicate the bottom just to kind of get it parallel, just snug it a little bit. And I'll also point that we put this little block up in the front here and that just kind of gives something for this to bump up against because we're putting a lot of pressure pushing in this direction on it and that just kind of keeps it from scooting forward. It gives it a positive stop to prevent the workpiece from trying to shove back even though we're not taking any kind of heavy cuts here but it's good to have a stop there exactly so we're going to get an indicator so we're going to put the indicator in here zero it out and we'll go to the bottom end of the stroke and just bump this thing around to Get it zeroed. Try that. Very close. Yep. Snug it down a little more, John. Hit that one just a little. All right. Yeah, Boy, it's, that's, it's probably that's fine. It, that's yeah. like a blind hog and corn, brother. <laughs> I'll take it any day. <laughs> so, guys, I just kind of got my cutter. I'm wanting to touch off initially here, so I'm just going to kind of bring this in real slowly until I'm just barely touching. I saw a little bit of a chip right there. There we go. I'll let it come back out. We're going to stop it. Raise that cutter back up. I got a dial indicator on here. I want to do is I'm going to feed in. We're going to make a hundred thousandths cut on this. Uh, that worked pretty good last time. So uh, I'm just going to feed this in toward me here. Get on the right one. I'm going to bring it in a hundred thou and we'll tighten up the carriage. And I believe that we are ready to roll, so. Yeah. And 
I'm going to engage the feed here. There it goes. And let it start cutting. Now we've got this whole compound here set to 45 degrees and what we're doing is this feeding down. So it's going to cut this down at 45 degrees. Now we've already mentioned that we know we got some issues with this planer. And one of the issues is, is that it's making a fairly coarse feed. We're making a little bit larger stroke than what we want, but right now that's as fine as we can set it without making some uh, adjustments to the machine. We don't even know what to do right now, but we do know it's going to be an issue. So we're going to go down through here. We're going to have to watch. We may have to adjust this one back a little bit, make sure we have cutter clearance down there. But you can see this uh, planer or shaper, whatever you want to call it, doing a nice job through here. Taking that uh, outer surface, that hard layer on the outside, just peeling it right off. Leaving a little bit of a rough finish. Again, I think it's just because we've got such a coarse speed on this and we can't adjust it any finer right now. But uh, Yeah, we tried to fine tune that down and we're, we're uh, at 25,000 step over right now, which is pretty coarse. I think it has something possibly to do with the hydraulic valve that adjusts the feed rate. So we've just been using the dial indicator, just setting it up, running it up against the tool there, and then just manually adjusting the uh, tool head over for our step over each time. I think he's going to do a lighter cut this time because we Pretty well got it cleaned up. Yeah, it's cleaned up, but I do want to take this a lighter path. We're just going to probably do 25 thou. So we'll just dial that in on the on the indicator. And I'll feed my tool cutter back down there. automatic feed now, let it feed on down. Beautiful. Love a planer shaper, man. They oh, just yeah. love watch that cut come off. It's going to be a lot more fun once we get all the bugs worked out of it, get the oh, hydraulics yeah. situated the way they should. This will be a sweet machine when it gets all tuned up and yep. running just right. Well, guys, I think this is a showing you this machine, showing you a planer in action. Actually, they call this a shaper, an open-sided shaper, but it's really kind of a planer. Uh, but kind of see how it works. Now, like we mentioned before, we know this machine has some issues. We're just playing with it more than anything else. Um, this is the first time Lance has seen it being used and we're about to, literally about to tear into this machine and start working on it. Yep. But we wanted to try it out. And yeah, well, Keith had a couple of these that he was going to machine for a couple of the students here at the uh, scraping class. So, you know, have Perfect. a little fun. Have a little fun. He, d he used the big uh, Cincinnati mill and then we used the Rockford to cut the angle there. So. Yeah, we definitely we definitely have some uh, issues to work out with the machine here, but it was great to be able to fire it up and run it and, and see it operate. See it operate. This is a little short table. It's about 36 inches long and what is it about 20 inches wide? I think yeah, it's a 36 inch stroke, uh, about 20, 21 and a half inches wide. So it's yeah. a nice little envelope for doing smaller work on. Well, I mean, just compare this to just like over there, the Cincinnati 36 cent shaper. I mean, this table right here is uh, 
if, if not bigger than the than, uh, 36 yep. inch shaper table there. And I tell you what, this gets me really excited to see mine running because I've got the 60 inch. It's an identical machine, but it's a little bit newer and it's a 60 inch stroke. So we've got a five foot table and a five foot stroke on mine. And that's going to be awesome whenever we get that thing running. It is going to be awesome. It's uh, actually a really nice machine. I'm, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky to have found it. You certainly are. All right, guys, we're going to take this off and go set it up on the grinder and finish this uh, straight edge out. But I uh, thought you might enjoy seeing the planer shaper here in action. Yep. There cool. you go. Thanks. So like we promised, the next step here is we're going to grind these in. And to do this, I'm going to be using John Terry's big Thompson grinder. This thing I think has got a 40 inch long chuck. What is that? 18 inches wide, 16 inches wide, something like that. Nice big magnetic chuck on here. Really nice grinder. Um, I'm looking forward to playing around with this one. So I'm going to grind it basically the same steps that I've been doing them in my home shop. Uh, we're going to start by actually grinding the top of this. And I didn't machine that. Normally I would just deck it off on the middle machine, but we're just going to grind it down, get down up underneath this uh, top and basically just have a nice flat side that's also parallel to the bottom and then we'll flip it over and uh, do the bottom. So I'm just going to start by positioning that roughly where I want it, turn the mag on. That is now locked into place and I'm going to raise my grinding wheel up and Turn things on here. Really? Just bring this over? Yeah, there you go. You're good. Yeah, that's good. Now I want to check my total stroke length here. I got it a little bit long. Let's try that. There we go. I'm just kind of touching off here. There we go. Put some cooling on this. And we're gonna take some fairly heavy cuts on here to kind of get down past that top layer. Doing about five thousandths per downstroke. Put that table down just a tad. another five thou pass there. All I'm trying to do right now is just get that top kind of cleaned up, flat and parallel. And I'm just going to take a, about a thou pass on there. We're just going to let that go back and forth a couple times and clean up real good. And I think we'll have that top done. We just let it spark out. I'm going to release the magnet here. It's going to go through a couple of cycles of just going back and forth. That'll kind of get any magnetism out of it. It's through clicking, pulls right off. Now, get this coolant kind of wiped down here. We're going to now flip this over and put that side we just did down on the table. And to help support it, I've got some magnetic transfer blocks here. So these are 
basically the magnetic flux will go through here, but that'll kind of give it some stability from side to side. I'm gonna turn the mag back on and we should be in good shape there. Now I'm gonna need to make my stroke a little wider. I'm gonna raise it up a little bit just to make sure I, it, sh it should be parallel because we basically ground the other side of this. So we, should, we should be hitting pretty uniformly across there, but I raised the wheel up just to give me a little bit of clearance and uh, we'll turn our feet on. I'm gonna let it just kind of go across one time here to make sure we're not gonna crash into anything. And also check all my stroke lengths. I do need to make it a little bit longer stroking in the end. All right, I think we're ready to go here. I'm gonna turn my coolant back on. We'll uh, down feed five thou, and yeah, we're just barely hitting in a couple little high points there. Let that go across one time. I'm gonna go down another five thou. Should be making a pretty good cut coming across this way. Let that wheel come back. Still going a little bit deeper than I need to, but it's all right. Look there, I think it's going pretty well. Uh, maybe not quite clean up. It's almost cleaned up on that first pass, that five thou cut. I'm gonna give it a couple more thou down feed. About two, two and a half thou. And that's cleaned up. We're just gonna let it spark out now. This big surface grinder just goes so much faster than my little one. I really like it. I'm gonna have to find me one of these Thompsons. I like it too. <laughs> I'm not down feeding, I'm basically just letting it go back and forth. And like I said, we'll go back a couple of times. We'll let this thing spark out till it quits cutting and we'll be ready to go to the next, uh, next face we want to do. Barely cutting. We'll let it go back across and that'll probably be it. I think we're gonna call it there. Now to do the, the dovetail side, the 45 degree side, I just got it set down in a couple of these, again, magnetic transfer blocks, but these are V blocks. So this is basically flat across the top. And for this, I'm not gonna use the power stroke. I'm gonna feed it in by hand, uh, just because I don't want it to hit against this. I don't wanna take any chances there. <coughs> so let's uh, power it up. <coughs> I think I'm gonna start by uh, dressing my wheel. He's got a wheel dresser built right into this thing. So there's a diamond right here. I'm gonna feed down a little bit more. We'll come back across that. A little coolant on there. All right. Get a little touch off here. All right, I'm gonna back off again about, I think I'm gonna back off about 10 thou just to make sure we got clearance. And we do. I'm gonna take my wheel back out to the end. I'm gonna feed in five thou. And I'm just gonna manually pull that wheel in. I can see everything I'm doing. I'm not gonna crash anything. I'm gonna take it back off now. We didn't really touch off there. Maybe saw a spark, one little spark, but not much. All right, again, about a 5,000 down feed. And we'll come across there. All right. 
come back off. I'm gonna do about another five thou down feed. I think we cleaned it up. I'm just going to go across it a couple of times, sparking it out. And I think that's going to be it. All right, guys, I think we have these uh, straight edges all machined. They've been ground and they are ready to be scraped. And uh, probably not going to show that process. These are actually going to some students and they're going to do this as their project in the scraping class. Uh, and I'm going to evaluate them and kind of see how they're cut and make sure these things are up to snuff. I feel like they are. Uh, and like I said, these are my prototypes. So hopefully we should be offering these for sale coming up really, really soon uh, once we kind of get them checked out here real good. So there you go. Well, there you go, guys. That's going to be a wrap. I think uh, we got these uh, straight edges all machined up. Had a lot of fun doing this video because I'm in a new shop. I'm over here at John Terry's place, and uh, we use three different machines to do this. A Cincinnati horizontal mill, this uh, Rockford uh, metal planer, shaper, whatever you want to call it, and then also the Thompson grinder. So, you know, I kind of got out of my normal shop environment, got to play on some new machines for me. So, uh, all in all, a lot of fun out here uh, doing this, and I uh, got to test out these uh, straight edges from Clark Easterling over at Windy Hill Foundry, who's uh, making these for me. I'll be selling them. He uh, does the foundry work, uh, but I'm really happy with how those turned out and uh, be anxious to see how they scrape out. But uh, I'm, again, very hopeful that here in the next month or two, we're going to have some of these up for sale that you can check out over on my website. The, my, the straight edges are for sale at store.vintagemachinery.org. Uh, I have the 9-inch version up for sale right now. This 12-inch version will be coming up very soon. And if all goes well, I hope to have an 18-inch version coming out in the future, possibly a 24-inch, uh, assuming that Clark's got enough capacity that he can pour those for us. He is limited on how big of a pour he can make, uh, but I would love to be able to offer a 24-inch version as well down the road. So there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those comments uh, are appreciated, as are those thumbs up. And uh, guys, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.